Welcome, everyone. The Bastion's Basilisks. I am Brandon Wynn. I am Calvin. And uh, we are continuing the Blood Hunter. Uh, I don't know why I said that so weird. Uh, <laughs> Blood German Hunter. Hunter. Blood uh, Hunter. Yeah, I am Blood Hound. Uh, but this is continuing the orders of the Bl uh, Blood Hunter class. We are on the Order of the Mutants, which, uh, to those who don't know, this is very like Witcher. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's very uh, much Witcher. It definitely took a lot of inspirations from The Witcher. So uh, getting straight into it, uh, you have mutagens at third level. When you choose this archetype at third level, you learn to master forbidden alchemical formulas known as mutagens that can temporarily alter your mental oh, excuse me, and physical abilities. As a bonus action, you consume a mutagen whose effects and side effects last until you finish a short or long rest unless otherwise specified. While one or more mut mutagens are affecting you, you can use an action to focus and flush all mutagens from your system, ending their effects and side effects. Mutagens are designed for the specific biology of the character who concocted them, and your mutagens have no effect on other creatures. They are so unstable by nature, losing their pot potency over time and becoming inert if not used before you finish your next short or long rest. Now, talking about that, I... I might be misremembering, but I swear the mutagen, if it was drank by someone else, gave them the negative aspect and not a positive. I think that I was a thing. I don't really know. Early I, 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 I didn't care about this class to begin with. I think like years ago, right when it dropped. Right, yeah, I'm sure. I'm off, sure there was a. But I think there was like it, a, that. I mean, it could have been. It could have been. I don't remember. I, I, I the don't only know. reason why I say that is because when it first dropped before there was like an update, I muted mutant was the first one I played, uh, or played I should say. It, it, like I had the whole thing printed out, and I remember seeing it. But honestly, could this is like five years ago, so this isn't like accurate information by any means. But it's like if my memory stands, I think this was something that if someone else drank it gave them the negative part of it like the trade-off versus the benefit uh but who knows i, I don't remember i'd have yeah, to actually yeah salem it. salem That's played something. one in my brother's game and it was really interesting because he was picking up actually he was using me as a test subject too which was really funny because i i was a hollow one i was also a, ra a ravenite dragonborn i was also not from that version of wildmount uh, because that character was the one who had a twin brother. And in this reality, Rogar, who was my character, died. But in my reality, my twin brother died. And so it was like a whole thing. So I like went to an alternate uh, reality. And, it's reality. Like, yeah. and I'm so I'm from an alternate. So it was like a whole thing. So he was like, he's very much picking up scrapings of like monsters and blood and heart. Like he was he, he at Salem, though, like he's. You can you can do the basic just like like kind of what The Witcher does, where you just kind of put the stuff together. Like it's not as in it's not that in depth. Yeah, it's like uh, I guess I'll put this frog leg attached to this like gas ectoplasm with some blood wart or something. So, yeah, like, so like he so it. you I think you could do it very. You don't have to do it super. It's not like it has well, like a specific recipe. You don't, have to, to you don't, yeah, you don't have to go very in depth. But Salem chose to, and so he's taking scrapings of pretty much everything we ran into that he could like because it's like for the strength potion, my character was really strong, and so he's like, "Well, I'll take scrapings from the dragon board because the dragon board, so like the the one that boosts your strength but drops your whatever." Like, he yeah, took, he I was took say like something like that. Like, you find a a, a creature like if you want, uh, this I don't believe this is one of the uh, things. Uh, mutagens but it's like say you want a resistance to necrotic you would like get some like demon like fucking related uh bile or fluid and like you'd have that fluid and then you'd put it in something else drink it and you know that type of stuff it, it, right so it's it like right so it's, it's very it's very he was playing way more chemist than i think because i think like it's in spirit it's a, you're you know an alchemist but he kind of yeah. went deeper into the like justifying why he was getting like so it was really interesting. So you can do point is person watching. Um, He's going Skyrim levels of Tim. like potion making. Hopefully Tim. Um, uh, but, but but you can I go like yeah you can, you can you can keep it very simple and just say 
I made I this just, potion. I, I just made, I I have these, and that's it. Like you, like any, like most classes, you could just keep it simple, and it's fine. But that's one of those things that kind of you can make it more interesting, justifying scrapings of different monsters, and like, oh well, this one is that or like you know if something gives you acid resistance you're like oh i i have something of like an i take a little bit you know ooze drop like pieces of ooze and then and it, so it's it's just it's, snort ooze powder <laughs> and then you get a you get a little jiggly because you're part ooze now oh my lord you become somewhat incorporeal that was the, uh, that was the, his, that was his his character we got ambushed by um face spiders because my brother threw C- two CR threes at us as an ambush at level. Well, we were, I was level two. Salem was level one. Jesus. He got dropped in one like hit. one hit. He got crit. Yeah, he, of, he got crit. He did a lot of damage. No, he got crit. So he got dead in Jesus. one shot, which is funny because that's the second time that Keenan's killed Salem's character with a spider. In what like the in like the first session that that character showed up, um, my character That's I think you. I think I got knocked unconscious, but everybody else heard the scuffle. They were able to kill. We I think we had an NPC. We were able to kill him. Um, Keenan allowed his because his character was a mutant, which is very like you know Witcher slash Jekyll Hyde, like you know alchemist. Thing. So his character where he got bit where like the fangs went in, which were like the back, like on the shoulders. So like, you know, the two tra- traps, you know, where yeah, no, uh, he mute, his body mutated. And now he has two giant eyes, like in, on his, like, so like, Keenan, you know, which was just the thematic thing. And it's not, Keenan yeah. didn't have to do it, but like, instead of killing his character, like the necklace he had broke, which had some significance. I don't remember that. But also he gained like these weird eye things, and so so we so then we became there were so many like at one point because I was an Echo Knight, although I found out that you you can only melee attack from the Echo. I found that out recently. You can only melee attack from your Echo. You can't range attack from your Echo, um, or no you can, no you can. You just can't use your additional attack to to be it has to be a melee for your anyway. So, Kurt, we were there was like a a wyvern or something coming at us or. And and essentially, Salem's character was just like this, like, and shot it and hit it with. It's like, no look. I was like, and I was like, that's cool. And then I had my echo out like thirty feet, and then I pulled out my bow, my bow in the cave, and shot it. The arrow disappeared, came out of the echo, and shot it and hit the wyvern. He's like, show off. Like it was so. So like it's it's interesting because so you can make them more of a mutant if you want like yeah, they could have if, you want them, yeah. if like and you know so it's when it ha- when it takes an effect it's not just oh their eyes go black and then whatever happens like you can make it you can flavor as long as it because it doesn't have any negative effects if you flavor it I mean plus the yeah. they actually alter your body in a way so you know Jekyll and Hyde it a little bit is is anyways formulas so. Getting past that, uh, there is a chart. The at their level, you have one that, uh, mutagen that you can create, but you know four formulas. At seventh level, you can make two at a time with five formulas known. Eleventh level, you still have two mutagens that you can create, but six known. Fifteenth level, you get three that you can create, uh, which is a max that you can create at a time, and seven known. And at eighteenth level, still three that you can create, but eight formulas known. I think there's like ten formulas. I don't remember. Uh, the number of formulas you can concoct, can well, concoct, concoct when you f- when you finish a, a rest, and the number of formulas you know increases your gain levels in the Blood Hunter class, as shown in the uh, mut- mutagen table. Additionally, when you learn a new mutagen formula, you can replace one formula you already know with a new mutagen formula. You choose four mutagen formulas to learn and can concoct one when you finish a short or long rest. Right, because that's uh, that starts as the basis. Yeah. Uh, there are 20 mutagens, by the way. Oh, shit, I didn't actually know that. It's yeah, this, and this And this is one of those things where if a person, kind of kind of going back a little bit, and, and we only got two to cover today, so we got plenty of time. Um, going back, like if it's a person who, this is one of those rewarding people, re- reward your players who will go above and beyond. 100%. Because you're not, penal, like, I will never penalize somebody for just 
showing up and playing and leaving. Otherwise, I would be penalizing Brandon. Um, <laughs> oh, just kidding. He doesn't show up. Anyway, <laughs> that's a little. Oh, yeah. anyway. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like, you. You show up when you show up. You're you're great. But um, but like, if to. if somebody sh- just you know they want to play, they show up. They play. They just like that's cool. They don't. They they're not required to get into it. Like we were saying, it doesn't have to be that deep. You're just like, all right, I chose these formulas. And this is the one I go with during the day. All right, cool. Easy peasy, no problem. But that's, a, that's once again, that's a way to reward players who put a little extra time into things. Like Salem's character, if he was in my game, I would, he's kind of researching, kind of like wizardly, you know, academic, academia. I'm going to say academic, but then decided. I know academia. what you mean. You, you um, said beautiful versions but, at the same time. But yeah, I know. Um, Reward him by like giving him more formulas known. Oh, hundred percent. Because you can only like, nothing it, stops it, you from actually knowing more. It besides just right, and it's so it's it's then choosing an arbitrary number. Right. So, it, and you're not pun- like if they're putting the time in, if they're investing the care, the time and the money or whatever. The, if they're researching in the game, there's no reason not to be like, yeah, you can know an additional formula because you're 100%. especially with what he was doing, you know. If he, didn't already, like, if he didn't already know the strength one, he could justify, like, yeah, it kind of justifies how you know, the like, how you pick, you know, going from four to five. You're like, well, obviously your, your, your next one, your fifth one has to be the strength one, but it doesn't necessarily, like, especially with the level gaps in those, like, you suddenly, somehow you spent, you've gained this knowledge and you've learned four. And then in four levels, you only gain one. And that like, yeah. and by the time you're like saving the world, you've only doubled your knowledge. Yeah, so it's, it's reward weird. the players. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even like. I. I probably wouldn't change how many they could create because, especially because it's a short rest. So that's already a limiter. Yeah, if I'm correct too, it's like. If I'm correct, say you make all three immediately, they last until your next short rest happens, right? Or until your next long rest. I don't remember uh, what it was it's said. Both. But it's like it, it's both. So how I would run it as DMs, like depending on if he's going to create like, nah, I'll just waste those and make more. That's what I would do. It's like, all right, those get wasted. You make some more and then those last until either your long rest or whatever. Like it's, it, I wouldn't penalize them for how they decide to run about wanting to do more with their character. No, my point so, is that it's by, even though by, you know, 15th level, you can have three created at the same time. I'm saying yeah. that the fact that it's a short or long rest it's already limited. You're are, there's already 100%. a hard limit in how many they can. So you can know seven thousand mutagens, but you but can only you can have only three, three at a time. Yeah, that's so. It's, like, it doesn't matter how many you know. It's just it's but but, I, but then I, it becomes kind of that's why I say it's more like academia because more yeah. wizardly because then you're kind of you're you're like all right well because it would suck if you get to the high enough level that you you only know eight and you're like oh man I wish I took the the ooze one that made me resistant to acid right now because this, but like, why wouldn't you? You already have mastered arguably eight formulas. Why can't That's you thing, learn like, another? I definitely give it. I how I would go about it is like because these are orders and they would exist in some way, shape, or form or facet. <laughs> they're probably not the only order the mutant related individual. That's true. So, like, That's true. They could do a, some... they could, they could do a, they could do quests or go to other other mutant orders where maybe their specialty is something different and then they could learn from them and during downtime after formulas from them like they're probably they probably would have very much similar to the alchemist where they have a book of basic uh alchemy, Arm- alchemy, yeah. Thing, yeah. uh they probably have their own it's like this is what most people basically have right this is a basic kit and here's more advanced stuff we can teach you the advanced stuff but these are what you're going to know anyways and, and i'm sure that these order the mutant uh Blood hunters would happily give other order of the mutant related people the uh, knowledge of us- utilizing it because one, the ghost layer is the largest one, so they're already a smaller subsect, and they, at least in the way that I would run it, it, it would be very much like a close knit type of family between all of them, to where they're like, yeah, of course, I'm going to teach you this. I would want you to because what happens if I'm the only one with this knowledge? It's written down somewhere, but it takes you forever to figure out where the fuck it is, you know, right. or I die not writing it down. 
and then it's lost, you know? So I, I feel like these things would be written down, taught to other people just off a of principle, right? you know? Like that's how I would run it anyways. And then, and, and then also if they spend their time learning the different knowledges, so that knowledge nature, knowledge arcana, like it justifies them understanding, like, you know, if you're crafting a recipe, like I'm only going to reference it because I'm playing EverQuest right now, but there, there could be a recipe for a specific type of thing like a like you know something you could cook um but there are different like one of the ones i did today requires an egg but there's tons of different there's snake eggs and like so there's a ton of different eggs you can use so it's the same thing like maybe your character your your basis for giving you stone skin type ability i don't know what all of them are but giving you know something like that that increases like your a armor cockatrice like, egg. That, yeah something like or or yeah something from a cockatrice but then also arguably something from a gorgon so either a gorgon or it's you know sister the 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 medusa or yeah because so, a gorgon that that, that fucking bull looking thing. thing so like if it's something that is able to petrify somebody or like something like that like there's there's no reason what is it there's no reason not to you know i don't know it's it like i said it's it's always it's i love players that go spend a basilisk i think it's called basilisk i think they do too yeah like go, they're they go above and beyond reward players for going always reward players for going above and beyond or let them know in advance, be like, I don't have the energy to do anything else. Like, so you can say you want to do a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with the amount of effort you are putting into my game. Um, and I'm sorry. Like, sir. I'm my, sorry, Curtis. My game has like, <laughs> or it had a whole thing. Like if you went out adventuring and you found it's like, what do I find? It's like, I, I think I had a list of like 600 different ingredients and like I had like little different things on what they could create. And then at some point I lost it and I or I threw it out. I don't remember. But like my game was going to have like a Skyrim ingredients list pretty much of what you could create. And no one did it within the first 10 like actual uh, sessions. And I was like, I told them every session, like, hey, this is a thing. And they're like, we're going to do it. Never happened. So I was like, I think I threw it out, honestly. I'm like, yeah, it's not even going to be incorporated you should, anymore. You should have saved it. You should have saved it. You know who I, you know who I am as a person. <laughs> yeah, although, I, I, although I don't yeah. know if Breaks Rocks would do anything about it just because that's not his style. But Well, we have two wizards, an artificer. We have a ranger. We had a ranger. We have a bard. I, I mean, like, the bard could do something with it, I guess. Like, it depends on how Ninja wants to run around that. But honestly, like... <laughs> you could find a way to create like healing potions. I'm not going to sit here and fight against it, right? But it's along the same line, you know. It's like rewarding your players. Oh, excuse me for doing stuff like that. Like I, I would love seeing that. And like you said, if you're not feeling it that day, or just in general, like, look, this isn't going to be one of those types of campaigns where you have to do so much. You know, you definitely well, tell the them. The cool thing is, is especially for I, this is now we're sidetracking into world building. But you have different plants that interact with other plants or other ingredients like, you know, meats or spices or minerals or whatever. Like, you know, that's world building. Now, you're, now your world has these different plants and then you figure out where, where they grow, what, what seasons they grow during. And then now you have this whole ecosystem that you've created – and there's really no negative to that because, you know, maybe the players don't appreciate it currently, but maybe future players are like, hell yeah. So like for one example uh, that I found out recently is that, say, uh, cattails, you know, the the corn dog looking fucking things. Yes, I'm aware. highly flammable if you get the fibers out, like the, the yeah. fibers of the, the, the stem. I never knew that. So. Say you want to create something that could go into some sort of like uh gives you vulnerability to fire but you can breathe underwater or something like that you know something along that or, line or, or increases that. your run speed because you're lighter type of yeah, yeah. No, exactly so back to the formulas that's that's a great way to incorporate things into your game <laughs> yeah we, we sidetracked hard on yeah, that one. but yeah but it's it's if a player wants to do go above and beyond with something you should never punish them 100%. I think you should encourage it because really like 
I want to like, you know, Brandon's found this out and Curtis knows already, but like, I'm, like, I'm a great player because I will put so much obnoxious amounts of effort, like two o'clock in the morning. Hey, so I have this idea. Go the fuck to sleep, Calvin. No, I had this idea. I want to build tanks. A yeah, well, I'm going to be honest. This is going to be very hard. I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I just have to find you. the dragon bones. That's the only <laughs> problem. No, go to fuck to sleep. Anyway. Back to this. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. That's that's its own separate issue. He he is very much a person that will. Don't let him be an artificer. That's the only thing I could say. Uh, I don't think you'd ha- we'd have to worry about nukes. It's everything else. Uh, strange metabolism. When you reach seventh level, your body begins to adapt to toxins and venoms, ignoring their corrupting effects. You gain immunity to poison and the poison condition. Always a plus to be immune to something like that. Additionally, you can trigger a burst of adrenaline that lets you temporarily resist the negative effects of a mutagen. As a bonus action, you can ignore the side effects, negative side effects of one mutagen affect you for one minute. Once you do so, you can't do so and again until you finish a long rest. That's a pretty decent ability given the fact that, say, there, I know the, the, there's the uh, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, and they're all separate ones. And uh, I think bludgeoning, your res- you Resistant to bludgeoning, I think you're vulnerable to piercing. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I've yeah. had to use this uh, the, for the piercing one. Uh, so getting the ability to ignore that vulnerability and just take normal damage is exceptionally important in certain, like just using this as an example, is it could be important as hell. So mainly when the side effect, the negative side effect, is so much of a trade-off sometimes that I think this being a seventh level ability, mainly giving you immunity to poison and poison conditions, I think it's a solid, uh, solid trait to get, honestly. Right. I'm just like looking at him like, like the first one is Aether. You have flying speed of 20 feet for one hour. Like we're saying, you could do the, uh, if you're using the, the cattails as, as part of the, as, However, you have disadvantage yeah, like, on strength yeah, checks like a, and dexterity yeah, checks. Have, like hawk feathers and stuff. And, and, and dis, you have disadvantage on strength and dex checks during this time. That would be a great, like, maybe maybe you're strong enough normally to carry somebody when flying, but maybe turbulent wind and you're like, I, I, we need to get to the ground safely. And so you choose to use this to ignore your strength and dex disadvantage just, just until you could get safely to the ground. I hope someone has feather fall type of thing well that's what i'm saying is you don't need it if you're yeah you know. I, I know what you mean so um, you know there's um being able to ignore one of the side effects for a minute like a minute is a long time in game mainly when you have like movement speeds and stuff like that so 30 feet per six seconds for so is that say 30 feet times for 60 seconds I, I i'm too lazy to do math but that is like i think that's a pretty decent amount of movement to be able to go in one minute so, or, or we'll just go, you know, and the second one is alluring that you blah, 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 but you have advantage on charisma checks. However, you have a disadvantage on initiative checks. So if you know, if you're trying to talk your way out of a fight, but you know, a fight's about to break out and you don't want to get got, you could it's choose. You just pop a drink in the middle of it. Like, ah, I'm all right. This well, is no, 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 no. Assume, you're, I'm assuming you already have this active. Oh, okay. okay. You have the, you had this active before going into whatever. Maybe you're at like a a, a Renaissance fair or not a Renaissance fair, but a, a masquerade ball or 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 something, some kind of you're, party. Yeah, like you're something that I've utilized. But, but you uh, know that you have like you're trying to you know wine and dine and wine and dine and talk and peruse and gain information. But maybe something happens, or maybe the DM had a plan for there to be a whatever. But things are starting to get tense and you know a fight's about to break out. You can choose at that moment to purge your system essentially of the negatives for one minute. Or you could just purge the whole thing if you don't want to be have bonus charisma checks. But <laughs> yeah, to the action uh, just so all right, but, we're fighting just but maybe, Henry Cowell arm reload. Right, <laughs> right. But maybe you're like, all right, it's about to go down. So you choose to make yourself immune to the disadvantage on initiative rolls. So yeah. <laughs> and that's only needed for the one time. Yeah, you only need you only need it for when that fight breaks out, and then maybe after you win that fight, you're able to because you didn't purge yourself of the whole of the mutagen, because you were able to go, I'm ignore that for a second. 
you get in the fight, you win the fight, and then maybe something happens, like more people come in from a different group because you still have advantage on charisma checks. You could schmooze and deceive or persuade your way through this. So people like, so maybe you don't have to get into another fight type of thing. Like it's there, there are countless advantages to it. So it's, I think, I think the thing that we're, we're obviously ignoring because it's, it's incredibly useful is the immunity to poison damage and poison condition. Because that means, which a thematically makes perfect sense. Cause if you're, if you're effectively poisoning and altering your body on a chemical level, you become immune to poison because your body's like, I, this is a thing that I'm already familiar with. Um, so you can't get drunk though, because you're immune to poison and the poison condition. That sucks. For some people, yeah. KGB. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, KGB, dude. So that was I, still the funniest thing. I went, Boop, remove the poison still... condition. <laughs> This is going to lead to a rant. I think I talked about it, but like blood curse of purgation would give you like get rid of the poison condition, and I would do that to one of my friends' characters. Who yes, you, that yes, you, like you, meant, you, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. That I think also it, sucks. I think you mentioned that during a video, but it might have been while we were doing the Blood Hunter originally. I think so. I think so. It anyway, was, so I, yeah, I think I talked about it last time. Anyway, but yeah, no, strange yeah, metabolism is a is a strong ability. Like you. Immunity to anything is always good, as you okay. said. Because it's not even just you're, if you were immune to fire damage, that's great. But you're immune to poison damage, which is great. I don't know where that ranks in the damage type. I mean, there's a race that, you know, Vianti gets immunity to poison. Acid and poison are the most resisted, if I'm correct, out of them. Fire and lightning. I always thought it was acid and poison. I don't know. There's, pro I don't know if there's actually a list somewhere, but fire. Well, because every fiend is immune to fire, immune, immune or resistant to fire. That is true. And then there's red dragons and gold dragons and the, you know blue Should dragons. Which, resisted or immune? I think it's resisted or immune. Okay. Um, it's still the most resisted because a lot of things resist fire. Well, because fire is also probably the most common damage type, so they kind of wanted to balance it out. Um, but being immune, this this is benefit more, almost more beneficial, or at least it makes up for the fact that you're, um, because may, maybe you're somewhere in the middle of the road. Maybe poison immune damage is somewhere in the middle of the road. So being immune to poison damage is, isn't going to be as effective as it could be. But on top of that, you're also immune to the poisoned condition. So like, giving you immunity to a damage type and a condition that kind of puts it above where it was. And then there's the additional for a minute. You can ignore the only negative. The only negative of that is you have to use it as a bonus action to negate this negative side effects. So if, if the fight already started, you can't give yourself to, you can't remove the disadvantage on initiative checks. But if you know, the fight's about to start, you can be like, can I use a bonus action before shit goes down and give myself, remove the negative side effects. So I don't have disadvantage on my, and, and a good GM is like, yeah, you can tell that something's going to happen. I'll allow it, especially because it lasts for a minute. It's not like, oh, I do this. It's like, well, the, f the fight breaks out, you know, two rounds from now. And you're like, well, I, it's, it's sad until the end of my next turn. So I guess I'm screwed type of thing. Um, it's been 15 seconds. Sucks to be you. Anyway, getting past that. Uh, straight to Brain of Axiom. I, I You are more literate than i am would it was that would that be how you would say that okay <laughs> oh, excuse me at 11th level your mutagenic hemocraft lets you wow i can't read lets your brand of castigation reveal a foe's true nature it's actually a tree and any illusion or invisibility if i actually i didn't read ahead of this and the fact that i said that and then it turns into illusions and invisibility is kind of funny to me uh <laughs> any illusion or invisibility in effect on a creature, when you brand it, ends, and the creature can't benefit from invisibility or illusion effects while branded by you. If a creature branded by you is in an alternative form by way of polymorph, the chain shape, or shape changer trait, the wild shape feature, and similar effects, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or revert to its true form uh, and be stunned until the end of your next turn. Whatever a branded creature attempts to alter its form, it must succeed a wisdom saving throw or have the attempt fail and it is stunned until the end of your next turn. I have one bitch about this. 
it's a wisdom saving throw, which is based off of the last time, well, before it got turned to an in, uh, intelligence save or intelligence based uh, class. If this was based off intelligence, even though I understand why it's wisdom, hold on, I stop. They have to make the wisdom save. So it's based on their wisdom. Your DC is based on your Hemocraft die. So if you chose uh, intelligence, I misunderstood that. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's why. That's I, why I didn't yeah. want to let you keep going because while yeah, it was I rude, I didn't want you to tirade for another two minutes and then me go, "Well, you're a dumbass." It's actually this. You're like, "Oh well." So no, yeah, it's, I actually didn't realize that. For no, that's a, that's a, that's a valid misunderstanding. So yeah, it's they have to make the wisdom save against whatever your class DC, DC is. I forgot. And the your class DC is based on based whether or not it's intelligence yeah. or wisdom. As your yeah, it's based off die. intelligence. I completely forgot about that. Well, no, it's uh, you get to choose what your hemocraft die is based on. I think so. You choose whether it's wisdom or intelligence. Hmm. I would actually. I haven't played Blood Hunter in fucking ages. I actually. It used know. to be. It used to be wisdom, but now it's. It, yeah. I think you get the intelligence per, uh, saving throw saving proficiency, throw. but I think you can choose which whether or not it's it's uh, wisdom or intelligence for your hemocraft die. But yeah, this is, I mean, the thing is, is you have to hit them, but like the cool thing is, is, um, like if, if they fail, if if they hit first and no, no, it it does because your brand of castigation requires you to hit them. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's like, it's, it's not like the next round you have to wait to do it. Like how the other ones you had to. Uh, no, no, all of that. All, all of them were immediate. Oh, I must have misunderstood what you were saying yeah. by that. Yeah, brand of castigation is when you punch them in the face, they get the brand, and then it just immediately gets branded. immediately whatever it is. Um, but yeah, like it's it's cool because uh, because once because I would allow once again because I'm a pretty generous DM if if you because you have a good pass investigation or something or passive perception or whatever whatever you know you're like that guy's a shapeshifter they're being real shady i would allow you to if because you know i think it says that you have to attack them but or it says you have to hit them so if you're able to go hey friend having a good time and just pat them pretty you're you're touching them because unarmed strikes are a damn are a weapon attack so i mean if we're if we want to get into semantics so I would allow you to brand of castigation them with an unarmed attack, which you're touching them, and then they get the brand, and then they have to make the save. So you can kind of out um, a shapeshifter in in the middle of it. I I do like. Um, I love the idea though, um, because. Some of the benefits of this, though, are if a creature branded by you is in an alternative form by way of the polymorph spell, you can polymorph other people with the polymorph spell. So, technically, I don't know if you could technically choose to fail a saving throw. However, I don't know if there's anything specifically saying that you can or cannot choose to fail a save. If we're in a fight, something polymorphs me, because in this instance, Brandon is the is the, the witcher. I mean the blood hunter. Um, and <laughs> I'm polymorphed into a chicken. I mean, you could technically just punch me in the face, and that's probably enough damage to get me turn me back because I only have the amount of hit points. But but you could maybe I turn they're like he's a cow now. Um, which is rude because oh. just because I've gained some weight doesn't mean you need to be rude. Um, but you t- you could turn me back using your brand of castigation because I was transformed or I'm in an alternative form by way of a polymorph spell. That is true. You know, or I don't think change oh, shape. Yeah. I don't think change shape forces somebody or shape changer. If you have a person in your group who is infected with lycanthropy or whatever i mean arguably technically if you have a group of blood hunters i might punch you in the face in this instance but maybe i'm bloodlusting a whole lot as my lichen you just smack me inside the head brand of castigation me 
I don't know if it technically would work because I don't think I'm um, and similar. It does say and similar effects. So I would count the hybrid transformation as a similar effect. If we're in a game and I'm just, I keep bloodlusting. You're like, you need to cut the shit. And then you smack me. And then I'm like, my bad. But, and then, I'd, and then I'd punch you in the face. Um, be like, well, now we're even. But, um, but like, there are offensive ways of using this against enemies. But there are also defensive ways of using this with your allies or against your ally. Like, that sounds wrong. For your allies. There we go. So this honestly, is. I'm- I never thought of it that way. So well, that's what I'm here for. Outside the box. Uh, I can't, I have to think outside the box. I'm not in a box. Or am I? Oh shit! I'm talking. I can't be a mime. <sighs> That'd be the most boring episode. I'm like, oh lord. <laughs> so, it's too. I kind of want you to do that specifically now. Just like make a video on purpose, doing only miming. Uh, it has to be one of your videos, though. Otherwise. Otherwise, it's a Borg video because I'm just. You're like, oh yeah, I, I think that would that would be funnier though. It's me me reading it like pantomiming reading it, like or I am reading it and then not verbalizing, but but my mouth is saying like um. Your and mouth you're, is. And, and you're reacting. You're like, and you're like, mm, yes, I do think that's a cool like. So you're also reading it and you're reacting. And so you're just. It'd be funny to pretend like you know what I'm thinking about at, at any given time. Um. But no, I think I think as far as the brand of castigation or additives, 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 um, their specific brands for each of the the different orders. Once again, this one is very specific. Yeah, this one's me. Like all all of them are all all of them are pretty specific. Yeah, um, like Ghost Hunter, I think is the most effective because it it's anybody. Whereas this one is specifically illusions or invisibility. I mean, that's yeah, still cool. Is if, if you know somebody's cool. invisible, you and can. Make, I didn't even think of that. I, I didn't even. So if I, I was only f- focusing on the the illusion stuff, but you just have disadvantage. But if you're able to tag somebody who's invisible, you make them visible. Now, guess what, bitch? It's on. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really good ability. I like that ability. Yeah, it's a really strong one. At 15th level, you get Blood Curse of Corrosion. I don't know how good this one is, so hopefully our buddy Calvin will read into it. Starting at 15th level, your Blood Curse can infuse a creature's body with a terrible toxin, or with terrible toxins. You gain Blood Curse of Corrosion for your Blood Maledict feature. Does not count against your number of Blood Curses known. Calvin, what does Blood Curse of Corrosion do? Right, because I have more multiple monitors. As a bonus action, you cause a creature within 30 feet of you to become poisoned. The cursed creature can make a constitution saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the curse on itself on a success. So you you make them poison for at least one turn, which is a solid use of a, of a, of a blood curse, in my opinion. Amplify. The, what? It's not bad at all. Right. Amplify. The cursed creature takes 4d6 necrotic damage when you inflict this curse, and it takes this damage again each time it fails a constitution saving throw. Fuck. Jesus Fuck. fucking Christ. Amplified, yeah. You're like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll take as a bonus action. You're poisoned until the at, at least until the end. Of, like, as a bonus action, you're doing 46 necrotic damage minimum, and they're poisoned until the end of uh, its next turn. On top of whatever weapon damage you use, so, right? If you attack, uh, well, no, it's the, well, this is the blood curse, so it's it oh, so is action. Yeah, it's not the brand of castigation, but you could. It could be one of those things where you smack somebody who has the, with a brand of castigation, and now they're suddenly, you because know, brand of castigation does psychic damage. Uh, now they're a, now they're after an attack though. Now they're back in their doppelganger form, and then you blood curse them, so then they start melting. You're like, ah! hit them with silver, motherfucker. I actually don't know if that helps. Uh, I've never actually faced a doppelganger. No, that is. I mean, especially considering like the blood howl uh, is kind of meh, but also that class, that subclass is super powerful anyway yeah i think Uh, they just had to nerf it somewhere yeah no that's that's a really good blood maledict especially because what you i don't remember when you get them back do you get them back every like short rest once you speech you must finish a short rest before you can use again you can use blood maledict twice between rests during the six three times 13th and four times yeah so 
that is a ludicrous amount of damage because you're just blood curse, blood curse, blood curse, blood curse. Okay, short rest. Oh, okay, blood, blood curse, blood curse, blood curse, blood curse. Long term, obviously, wow, damn, that's a solid. I'm not gonna lie, I think this is out of the three that we've seen because I don't remember the blood curse for a ghost layer. I think this is probably the arguably one of the better ones. Because if I'm <sighs> correct, after reading through, I forgot fucking warlock light's name uh profane, profane soul. soul yeah uh i don't think that one has a good one either oh blood so. curse of the exorcist is right that's the one that that um it ends the charmed or frightened condition or they're possessed if they're charmed frightened or possessed you just end it yeah like that's a good one that's really good in yeah. a in specific situations it's to be fair your brand yeah. of castigation so this is kind of the the balancing of the two is Ex- Curse of the Exorcist is good in specific situations, but their cast the Ghost Slayer castigation is good in all situations. Versus your mutagen uh, blood curse is really good in all situations, but your your castigation is only good in certain six, six, you know, certain situations. So yeah, yeah, no, but it's, it's all that's, that's still yeah, real. Yeah, that's still real, real strong. Mainly at a fifteenth level, like you're just. Adding forty six plus right because because at that point you're you're taking what one d one d ten one d eight you're taking one d eight you can at that level you can eat one d eight damage because your amplify is just you take your 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 crimson right damage right I think it's maxed and I don't know if they roll anymore I think it's maxed so it's eight automatic damage I believe I also don't remember so this is going off of information I I. Last time we did the Blood Hunter video. Oh, you take the chronic damage equal to one roll of your Hemocraft die. So it is a roll. So it is rolled out. Yeah. Okay. I remember it was rolled at one point, and then it was automatic. Crit, uh, this damage, it, this damage bad. can't be reduced in any way. An amplified curse gains an additional effect. Noted. The, yeah. So you're taking at this point, you're taking one d eight damage to do four d six, and the poisoned condition. Immediate benefit, in my opinion. It's so good. I would've, the, I would've o- the only way it would be negative is if something that. Is, immune to the um necrotic or poison the necrotic or poison but then you wouldn't use it because you would you theoretically would know know. you'd be smart so yeah that's (laughs) level 15 by that point (laughs) yeah no that's that's a strong blood curse oh 100 percent exalted mutation i thought this said exhausted mutation for a second (sighs) yeah i was like very confused because i read that correctly the first time and then my brain convinced me otherwise at 18th level, your body has adapted to produce mutagens naturally in a moment of need. As a bonus action, choose one mutagen currently affecting you. Its effects and side effects end, and you can immediately have a mutagen you know the formula for take effect in its place. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your Humacraft modifier, modem, uh, minimum of once, not modicum. Uh, you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. I actually think this is a... If you know how to use it, this would be game changing, right? Like this could turn the tide of a battle immediately. It could, if you know, yeah, it. because it's on top of the fact that you can ignore the negativity for one minute, right? And it's, it's right. So maybe you're trying to do one thing, and then that thing doesn't work. You're like, fine, fuck it. And the fact that it's um not just once per long rest it's your hemocraft so theoretically at at 18th level you're you're should be able to do it five times per long rest which yeah it's and and that's not counting into the fact like like we discussed if you let your player because they put a lot more time into their character in doing the research and stuff allowing them to have more than eight because now it's the list is longer of, of spells that they could just Finagle in, or not spells, um, but mutagens. That's, yeah, no, that's a, that is a solid capstone ability. Because it, it's kind of the, the, the perfect, the perfect end to that. It really is a perfect capstone because, I mean, bonus action, you're probably not doing a whole lot with your bonus action anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, you're like, all right, you can't, um, well, Oh, because this one is it's it's so if you have you have your three created, so you have let's say you have the you know the first three on the list, but it's a situation 
that could benefit from one of the mutagens you don't have prepped. You can just change it with one that you this have. This is one that you know. know. Yeah. So this is almost like casting a spell out of your spell book type of thing. No, 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 yeah. You, you don't have like you don't it doesn't have to be prepped. It just it, it still uses the spell yeah. it's it still uses the spell slot if we're using, you know, analogies. But but you know it. It's like it's just automatically your body's so used to it, you just you can just flush your system, it automatically produce it's like an adrenaline dump, stopping the adrenaline dump just to get a double. And arc. and the best part is it it doesn't so this wouldn't count against so if you have three prepped a, B, C. You drink A. You're like, cool. I'm. We're going with A. We're doing stuff with A. And then you're like, oh crap! If only I had Q right now. You still have. You can. Sh- you can shift it to Q, for however long you want. And you need it, but you still have B and C left. And you can do this the amount of times. Of right. The modifier. Yeah. So. So that's what I'm saying is that you you still have B and C mutagens prepped. Yeah, so it's, like, it's not. It's not. It's not like you're consuming another mutagen and you're changing the place. You're essentially you're changing what virus is affecting your body. You're like, we're gonna shift some chemicals around, and like that's it. You're changing what buff you have. You're not. You're not consuming a different buff. So you still have. So <clears throat> the point is, is it's not wasting any. Or it's not wasting your limited three mutagens per short rest resource, which yeah. I think is cool. I think which I didn't even realize till. I started thinking about like, yeah, no, that's a really good ability. It does look, yeah, it's a solid cap. Black rock. And that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have like lung issues and keep coughing. Uh, that is the Order of the Mutant. Last time I played a Blood Hunter, it was Mutant. I believe it was a, I don't know if they updated it recently, but it was sometime last year. I had a blast, but I also, obviously I played Assault, but we did the Blood Mage on top of it. So I was really obsessed with blood for some reason. Uh, I've really played an edgy character that time. On top of it, I was a tiefling. Uh, but no, we're starting... lung, lung. you have lung issue, not lung issues, not lungs. You have just the uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, but taking your breath away is a lot easier. So I shouldn't t- get too much credit getting, for it. Getting tapped in the in the sternum is like so much easier to knock the wind out of me. There's, there's so much less wind. Over. Yeah, it's just poke. Oh, well, he's unconscious. Now, order of the profane soul. Uh, trash, just immediately. No, I don't know if any. Because <laughs> it's a it's it's warlock light. This is. So... I, I actually know people who enjoy this. So this is so much I, unnecessary I, bullshit. I I'm gonna ask Calvin on this because I don't want to go through the fucking entire spell slot thing. Do I have to do that? <laughs> No, it's there's a lot. Not that yeah, essentially, just... cantrips known. You start at two, you get up to three cantrips. Spells known, you start at two, you end at eleven. Spell slots, you start at two, one, you end at two. That's what I'm saying. You're like worse than a slot yeah, level. Gonna... You start at one. Eventually, you get to fourth. So it's it is already worse than a warlock. Only, if I'm correct, no, never mind. I'm an idiot. Don't don't talk about that. Uh, you still get your other worldly patrons at third level. I believe. Yeah. Uh, they have the Archfey, the Fiend, and Great Old One from the Player's Handbook. The Undying. I don't know what SCAG is. I don't remember that one. Sword Coast uh, Adventurer's Guide. I don't have that. Oh, it's, no, I do have that one. Stag, I read Stag, it. not SCAG. Um, SCAG. Why did I say it SCAG? Then? I don't fucking uh, know. I don't know either. Uh, the Sun Fuel and Hexblade here. from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Uh, the Fathomless and the Genie from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. The Undead. Don't know that one. I don't know VRGR uh, for some reason. I'll probably hate myself as soon as you say what it is. Uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Are you fucking serious? I think that's what it is because 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 I think GR is Guide to Ravenloft and then VR. That makes so much sense actually. Yeah. Van Richten's uh, Guide to Ravenloft. Uh, spell casting ability is based off of intelligence or wisdom. Which, if this is going off what you were saying earlier, which makes a lot of sense. Right. Uh, spell save DC is 8 plus proficiency plus hemocraft modifier. And then spell attack is based off of proficiency plus yeah. hemocraft modifier. But otherwise, it works like a warlock. Pretty much just like a Can't warlock. Can't trip to warlock. Spell slots are warlock. I think it gives you a... Sp- you probably have a specific spell list. 
yeah, you you use this you use the warlock spell list. <laughs> Spells yeah. known just like like it tells you how many you can know from the spell list. It's it's that part warlock. Anyway, right focus. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> right focus. Starting at third level, your weapon becomes a conduit for the power of your pact with your chosen patron. That's a lot of peas. Uh, <laughs> while you, god damn it, while you have an active crimson right. You can use your weapon as a spellcasting focus for your warlock spells, and you gain a specific benefit based off your chosen pack. The Archfey. When you damage a creature with your weapon, for which you have an active crimson right, that creature glows with a faint light until the end of your next turn. For the duration, the creature gains no benefit from any cover or for being invisible. I'm glad it said invisible, because I was about to say something on that. The Celestial. As a bonus action, you expend one use of, of your Blood Maledict feature to heal one creature you can see within 60 feet of you. The creature regains a number of hit points equal to one roll of your Hemocraft die plus your Hemocraft modifier, minimum of one. The Fathomless. You can breathe underwater. Additionally, once per turn, when, you're, when you damage a creature with a weapon for which you have an active crimson right, you can reduce that creature's speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. The Fiend. Well, while using Rite of the Flame, that's specific, if you roll a 1 or a 2 on a damage die, when you roll, when you roll the extra damage from the right, you can re-roll the die and choose which to re-roll. Which roll to use, my bad. I don't, I don't know why I said that wrong. Uh, dyslexia. Uh, the Genie. As a bonus action, you expend a use of your Blood Maledict feature to give yourself a flying speed of 30 feet. You're a chicken, which lasts for a number of rounds equal to Humancraft modifier minimum of one. I just think of like a chicken flying around the battlefield at this point. Like you can't stay, but you know, it's interesting. Uh, the Great Old One. When you score a critical hit against a creature, that creature... You're not a creature... chicken. You're summoning, like, it's like a genie where they have this the little... Yeah, I get, I get it. Tornado it's just... under them. God, beast. I just really like the idea of a chicken flying around, okay? That feels just... racist somehow. I know that it's weird Ow. coming from me. I don't know. I'm thinking of, like, Link attacking chickens. That's, like, that was actually where my... Uh, they're not called chickens. They're called something else. And also, you don't attack them! They yeah, murder they attack you. you back. They exactly. murder you. Like, that reminds it... me of a clip I saw from, like, uh... The one that's the, the one before Tears of the Kingdom or whatever the hell it's called, Breath like of some, the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Somebody like took a it's like a go 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 or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know what they're called. Garoko. Uh, the it's it's not a chicken, but it is a chicken. Uh, they took it out of the wild and then they got attacked by like one of those like big lion looking monsters, and the chicken got damaged, and then it summoned like a swarm of them and they murdered it. They murdered the like the chickens murdered the lion thing. Like it's a clip I saw online. I'm like, I don't know. Like just show up to the fight with Ganon and be like, let's go, Ganon. <laughs> and then they just they don't stop until it's gone. Uh, I actually didn't know they were not called chickens. No, but I really chickens. do think of like Legends of Zelda. Uh, the Hexblade. When you successfully target a creature with a blood curse, the next time you hit that creature with an attack while the curse is in effect, the attack deals additional damage equal to your proficiency modifier, so a maximum of what, plus five? They're called cuckoos. Uh, oh. I, I don't know why, but I immediately thought of chocobos. Uh, the undead. When you take necrotic damage, you can use your reaction to have the damage. In addition, your appearance changes to reflect some sort of aspect to your patron while you have any crimson right active little niche that you have to take uh, necrotic damage but that's fine I, I get it for the undead the undying when you reduce a hostile creature to at least of a, at least a mild threat that is confusing to read uh dm's discretion to zero hit points you regain a number of hit points equal to one roll of your hemocraft die that hurt my brain actually reading that one i i think it's when you reduce a hostile i think it's because if it's if you kill a civilian, they're not hostile. Yeah, because like so a, I think I think they were trying to mild threat. It's really a hostile creature that's at least a mild threat. I think that's their way of making it so like you can't just run around killing, killing chickens. Just, you can't yeah. run around just killing chickens. Or chickens will. Or, or cuckoos. cuckoos will well, cuckoos are a threat we've established, but you can't yeah, just run. Are. You can't just because I, players are monsters, and they will just have. A herd of sheep, and then you're just like, "Well, I got my ass kicked that fight." Instead of wasting resources to heal, dead, 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 
Like you'll just and slaughter like hired. like ten or twenty sheep, and you're like, "Woo! I'm back to full, everybody." Plus, we got it, some food. Like your characters are equally either really, really average, okay people, or they are fucking monsters. Typically. Or, or, I, or I guarantee there's something that allows you to temporarily summon something. And then it's just yeah, like then, like a uh, a conjure woodland animals or something like yeah. that. So where, where and, and if you it goes back to right, and you and you conjure more than one with that, so you conjure like fifteen squirrels. You're like dead squirrel, heal, dead squirrel, heal, dead squirrel, heal. Yeah, it's, so it's just automatically just yeah. Okay, so um, effectively, you Archfey is um, the fairy fairy fire. Eh. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. It's it's all, it's, all, it's, it's all right if you ha- if you're fighting something that can go invisible or tries to hide. Um, Celestial is pretty good. I might actually talk to Curtis and see if I can change my character from change chips from a warlock to a blood hunter with the Celestial, like Profound Soul Celestial, because they also hunt fiends, which also is a thing my character does. So I might be like, can we do this instead? I think it worked better. Um, so Celestial is pretty good, um, because one, use your Blood Maledict, so that's, like we said, you get up to a four or five per short rest, um, you heal one creature you see within 60 feet, so it's kind of similar to what the Celestial Pact can do where they can heal, it's like, but it's 1d6 normally for them. Their pool is bigger, but their the dice healed is less. Um, but yeah, it's it's one d one d x plus hemocraft modifier. Uh, Fathomless, you can slow people down. That's all right. You can breathe underwater. It's eh. yeah, but I mean, if, if you're, in a, you're if you're in a game where that matters, that's the most important thing. Um, yeah. If you're not, fiend fiend is important. fiend is nasty. Um, Only if it's right of the flame, though. Oh, right of the flame. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it's niche. That's the thing is that you have to use it. Which yeah, is but, yeah. But if you're if you're already using right of the if you if you pick if you I mean you only have like six or seven rights that you can pick from anyway. So you're like if you, you know, know you're going three automatically. There's well the regular rights and esoteric rights. So there's cold thunder, I believe. No, cold lightning and fire. So that's the issue. Hold Flame, on. frozen storm, dead oracle roar. So you have fire, cold, or lightning. So there's a one in three chance that you're picking fire anyway. If you know you're going feed, especially if you know you're going profound soul, and then you don't get your next right until fourteenth level, or you don't get to choose it. Um, yeah, but that just adds that just increases your the minimum damage or theoretically that you're doing. So. It's almost like a, and if you take the, I don't know if you get, they get great weapon, they get, you get great weapon fighting. So if you, you're picking a great sword, you're doing 2d6 plus a D X of fire damage. And then you get to reroll the normal damage dice. Plus you get to reroll your right damage dice. So no, I, th- I think that one's good. Uh, Genie. You can, I mean, you give yourself a fly speed once again, circumstantial, um, underwhelming, but can be really useful. Uh, if great, you need to get away really quickly, why not? Great old one's really good. When you score a critical hit against a creature, that creature and any other creatures of your choice within 10 feet of it are frightened of you. That is, or can be really strong. Yeah. If, if you get a, yeah, no, that could be, because it's not limited, because it's, it's not a saving throw. Either it's no save saving throw, exactly. It's just automatically frightened at a level three. Um, Hexblade is underwhelming because you have to target them with a blood curse, and then the next time you hit them, you do an additional two to six points of damage. It's not like for the next while that blood curse is affecting them, or for the next round. It's no, you you go man, and they go hey. um, unless there's really good blood curses that. Um, undead. Un- undead is undead is really good. You take half. Essentially, you use your reaction to take half damage from necrotic damage. So if if you're already a race that might get resistance to necrotic damage, like a shatter kai, like you're taking quarter necrotic damage. And if you're fighting things that are doing, if 
I would have loved to have had this ability when our group in Curtis's game fought a sh- zombie dragon and we took like 52 points of necrotic damage, which then also reduced our max hit points by 52 damage or 52 points. So if I could have reduced that damage by half, I would have. So once again, yes, it's circumstantial, but you're all, but when it helps, it helps real good. Uh, in addition to your appearance, I mean, you know, and then the next is kind of cosmetic. You you look kind of undeadish, um, and then undying is nasty because you're already a melee type character. So just any time, why not just to just get free health points, right? Much. Because right because you're it's you know they they they're very nitpicky. Like has has to the be a hostile threat. Part about this Hop is that creature mild threat. You kill one creature with your attack and then go to another one and get. For that kill, exactly. You're not. It's not use a reaction to gain hit points back. So once again, this is this is why remarkable recovery becomes just the most broken feat, depending on what build you go with. You're like, cool. I kill you. I gain hemocraft plus my constitution modifier back. I kill another creature. I get hemocraft plus my constitution modifier back. You're like, how are you still standing? Magic. Um. Yeah. Some of these are meh. Some of these are like really good. Of course, the undying ones are good because the dead people are the best. I also like Celestial. Celestial is really strong, too. I'm not going to lie. I've never played a Warlock. I've never tried to. I have tried so many times. <laughs> so I actually don't give a single fuck about Warlock. Like, you hate them because you, you actually understand it. I would, I rather, I would rather go through basic training again. That means something if you'd rather go through, like... <laughs> Paid or unpaid? If you're willing, to obviously do paid. Un- obviously paid. Oh, I was gonna say, if you're no, I know. Uh, I would play. I would rather play. Bad. Okay. <laughs> so here's the like, what I would rather do, I guess, because we're talking about it. Paid basic training. Play a warlock again. Unpaid basic training. Uh, actually, oh, that's, that's like that's like ninety low. I would. I would. You would have to force me to go say, through basic training again. If you were willing to go through it for free. No. Just because you that just shows warlock. how much I hate warlocks. It's like crazy. that is a, that is commitment. Yeah, no, I oh the money was nice. I was making because I was an E three when I was in basic, so I was making like a thousand bucks, a couple thousand bucks, like a month. That's not bad. But, excuse me. Uh, going past that because this is about to get real long, real quick. After it's already uh, this one, yeah. Mystic Frenzy. Starting at 7th level, when you use your action to cast a cantrip, you can immediately make one weapon attack as a bonus action. This just gives you better action economy. Honestly, I like this idea. Right. So it's it's strong, and on top of that, you get another 7th level ability, so, Calvin, if you have anything more to say. Um, oh. I mean, I have to look at the um, the Warlock spell list. Let me look at their cantrip list, see if there's anything on the uh, Booming Blade. Booming Blade is a cantrip, and Booming Blade does... So you can effectively... Why you would do it that way, but I don't know. But you could uh, you could bo- use Booming Blade to attack somebody, and you're technically casting a cantrip. Um, yeah. So you're using your action to cast a cantrip, but with that action, you're attacking with the weapon. So you use Booming Blade. You still hit with your, let's say, greatsword... Because you can use a great sword, theoretically. I actually didn't even look if you can use a great sword. I assume you have martial weapon proficiency, though. Martial weapons, yeah. So you you use booming blade to smack somebody with your great sword for as your as one attack action, and then booming blade also damages them for stuff, and then somebody else for stuff or or whatever. I don't remember exactly what it does. And then you can just swing again as a bonus action, like, or you know, I think. Uh, Green flame blade, green, green, green flame blade. Also, so you can hit two. You can use your action to green flame blade one person, and then another person takes damage, and then use your bonus action to swing again. So you you're still getting to swing twice in a round. So it, it's almost you know depending on what you do, it's still pretty solid. Or if you're trying to like, I don't know, if you're trying to do something, or if you use like lightning lore to pull them towards you you're like get over here Kadoosh. so i mean there's if you're limited it's you know it depends on how you use it but it could it could be really strong it's it's it can also be really underwhelming if you build your character poorly you're like oh, i could do this i can make 
Oh, although it does say make one weapon attack as a bonus action. It does not state melee weapon attack. So you could like I was thinking of it that like, oh great, but you it doesn't and it's not right damage. So you're like, cool, I cast you know, firebolt, and then I shoot you with my crossbow. Which is actually at that point, that could be your right damage weapon. You could have your right damage weapon on a crossbow, which normally you can only shoot and reload. So maybe you have it reloaded and then you, you know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? There's so you, there's a little bit, it's a little bit better than I thought it was, but it's, it's still a little, eh, not it depends on big. how you utilize it, but you also get another seventh level ability. So it's yeah. fine. So on top of that revealed arcana at seventh level, your patron grants you the use of a distinctive spell based on your pact. You cast a spell using any pact magic slot and can't do so again until you finish a long rest. The Archfey, you cast Blur. Celestial, you cast Lester Restoration. Lesser Restoration, my bad. The Fathomless, you cast Gust of Wind. The Fiend, you cast Scorching Ray. The Genie, you cast Phantasmal Force. The Great Old One, you cast Attack Thoughts. The Hexblade, you cast Branding Smite. That's not bad. Uh, the Undead, you cast Blindness Deafness. And the Undying, you can cast Silence. Shut the fuck up! These are these are some pretty good spells in my opinion. Like yeah, they're not bad. I mean, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's once per once per long rest. I mean, it's it's effectively it's like their Arcana ability that they get. So it's just once again, it's just a lazy kind of rewording of what their like advanced Arcana or whatever the hell it's called that that warlocks get. Um, I mean, some of them are like lesser restorations. That's a good spell, you know, if, if you need it. Scorching Ray is a good spell. Phantasmal Force is a pretty good spell. Detect Thoughts can be good. Branding Smite's good. Blindness Deafness is good. Can be good. Silence can be good. Blur is Blur is pretty good too. So like these are all mostly good spells, and you get it for free. So and then it's but it's also think about it because you get another, you get two abilities at seven. So you're kind of combined. There it's probably yeah right. This is pretty good. Level seven, it's 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 pretty decent. But alone, they're like yeah. Once for long rest, I can cast Blur. Hooray! But once for long rest, you can cast Blur. And then next turn, cast a cantrip. And then shoot somebody with your crossbow. Or stab them with your rapier. Or XYZ. Whatever. Shoot them with a ballista. Alright. Uh, I, I honestly think these are pretty decent spells that you could use. And they... they... For the most part, go with their pact. So I think they're decent. Right, and you know what you're getting later on. So you, if like the plan is like you could build your character knowing that at seventh level you're gonna get lesser restoration once for long rest. You're like, all right, cool. So that's if that's something you would normally get, you don't have to pick that because you get it or whatever. So it's you could build around what spells you know you're gonna get at higher levels. Well. You're right, 100%. Uh, that's what I do, honestly. When I create like a, a class that has magic in it, like I, 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 I get right. free skills later right. on. So. I'm always right. Uh, Brand of the Sapping Scar. I honestly thought it was Scrapping Scar. Upon reaching the 11th level, your Brand of Castigation feature digs dark arcane scars into the target, leaving them vulnerable to magic. A creature branded by you has disadvantage on saving throws against your Warlock spells. Excuse me. This could be kind of useful for things that have like automatic advantage. Uh, what is it? Magic resistance. They just instead of having advantage, they get normal rolls. Right. And even just having straight disadvantage on normal things. Like this is this is a pretty decent eleventh level. That's true because there's a lot of like fiends or celestials or there's there's a lot of or fey. There's a lot of creatures that just for some reason have advantage on saving throws against spells. So you smack them with your weapon and then you cast let silence on them or or blindness deafness sucks to be you. You know do it as a normal cast or or if they're not yeah it's once again this entirely depends on what spells you take um so it could depend on what you what you take but it's not bad no it, it i like it mainly because i just imagine like a dragon's like haha i usually can walk with the like walk these off it's like not today bitch uh, anyway, to continue, the un or unsealed arcana at fifteenth level, your patron grants you the use of an additional spell based off your pact. 
cast a spell without expending a spell slot and can't do so until you finish a long rest. The Archfey, cast slow. The Celestial, revivify. Fathomless, lightning bolt. Fiend, fireball. Genie, protection from energy. Great Old One, haste. Hexblade, blink. Undead, speak with dead. Undying, bestow curse. For a moment, I was thinking this is really like low level stuff, and I forgot that the you know warlocks only go to fourth level, and so does this. I was like, you know, this actually is all... yeah, but well, normal warlocks get up to fifth level spell slots, and I then can't. and then they get other higher level spells, but only once per long rest. They get a they get of of six to ninth level, they get one one per essentially one slot, one per long rest. So one six, one seven, one eight, one nine. I literally did not know that. I it's unfortunate that I know that. <laughs> I feel for you so much. <laughs> um some of these are some of these are pretty good. I mean slow is a good spell. Revivify is, I mean anybody getting revivify is always a good thing. Uh so, but these are all third level spells, I think. So lightning bolt's fine, fireball's fine, or fireball is fine, protection from energy is good. Haste, always a good spell. Blink, good. Speak with dead, can be circumstantially good, but... Uh, and then bestow curse is all right. Can be good, can be bad. It depends on... I don't remember if they get a saving throw, and then it all depends on what you use it for, and yada yada bada bada bada. But, no, it's... It's not bad. It's not bad. It, it all depends, on what, it all depends nice. on what you do. Uh, continuing... Blood Curse of the Soul Eater. I just I'm automatically thought of the anime personally. Starting at 8th level, you learn to siphon the life energy from your fallen prey. You gain the Blood Curse of the Soul Eater. For your Blood Maledict feature, uh, this doesn't count against your number of Blood Curses known. Calvin, what does yeah, Blood Curse do? When a creature do? that isn't a construct or undead is reduced to 0 hit points within 30 feet of you, you can use your reaction to offer their life energy to your patron in exchange for power. Until the end of your next turn, you make attacks with advantage and you have resistance to all damage. Holy shit. Yeah, that's that's strong. Like, it, you have to kill somebody. Not Construct or Undead, but that's... That, that, that's pretty good. Especially because, you know... Oh, sorry. And then there's Amplify. I forgot about Amplify. Additionally, you regain an expended Warlock spell slot. Once you've amplified this Blood Curse, you must finish a long rest before you can amplify it again. So you get, you can take a D12, D10, whatever their max is, and get a spell slot back. Um, I think technically you have to amplify before, so you you don't get resistance. You would not get resistance to the to your amplified damage. Actually, because I think amplify you can't resist it anyway. Um, it specifies that in its ability. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so you take a D10 necrotic damage or whatever, and you get a spell slot back. So, I don't know how they how they work if they get them back with... So you have to take... This class... Oh, oh, they, oh they, get them back with, they get them back with a short rest as well, because, of course, yeah. they do. But it's still it's still pretty solid. Like, you're, you're in a fight, you kill somebody, and you're like... All right, I'm gonna activate my blood curse. I, this class worked a little bit better than I anticipated. Like honestly, yeah, I still, because, yeah, I'm because you have to remember that it's also on top of the normal class. Blood hunter, yeah. So it's, it's on not top just of class. It's actually yeah. pretty. pretty it's on top of everything else that blood hunter gets, and then yeah. they also get this. <laughs> that makes what makes sense why people prefer this over warlock. So actually, it's not that bad. Blood, your blood curse is under your blood, your blood maledicts, right? Yes, blood maledicts are blood curses. Okay, so that That's makes that that actually makes that ability, actually that makes the mutagen one even more powerful. But this one even even more more powerful because um, sanguine mastery at level twenty, when whenever you score a critical hit with a weapon for which you have an active crimson right, you regain one expended use of your blood maledict ability. So you use this, and then for until the end of your next turn, you make attacks with advantage and have resistance to all damage. If you get a critical hit when while you have advantage, you then could get a, your, a blood maledict back and then could do it again when you kill another creature. So if, you, if you're critting often enough, you could just keep gaining... You could be tanking somehow. 
Yeah, and yeah, still no, use. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty strong. Oh, it, it's a pretty good class. I, I I am surprised by that since the last time I read it was I think two years ago, three years ago. Mm -hmm. It's good. No, it's good. I still fucking hate warlocks, but yeah, this is warlock light. So it's almost well. It's like some of the abilities. Yeah, because you're like you don't get as as high of stuff, and it plays off of class abilities. But I mean, you don't get invocations. So I mean, so it'd be cool if you got invocations, but but it you is kind of it is kind of um it's more it's more warlock diet warlock because like light is like you know feels smaller than that but like because you still get a decent amount of spells you don't get as many spell slots and it's high but you still get up to fourth level and so it's still a strong it's a strong subclass because it's because it's also amplifying your normal class like warlocks are shit and then they get some subclasses that are just also garbage. Like, so it's just garbage on top of garbage, whereas it's, it's a good class. And then the subclass can be good, depending. So. Obviously, I love Warlocks so much. Yeah, the love is real. My anyway, favorite, everyone. Class. Uh, this is concluding the orders of the blood hunter. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know how long uh, it's been since we started this, but thank you all for watching. Please leave a, a like and subscribe. Uh, my name is Brandon. My name is Calvin. And see you all in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And now you get to listen to the outro song. A nasty outro song. Yeah.